Hello, my dears, Daniela here, and welcome to another episode of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. It's January. I know that we are moving right along into the new year. Some of you may still be you know, thinking about those New Year's resolutions that you made. Some of you may still be holding true to them. And I'm bringing that up because I know that so often during New Year's, people make resolutions to get out of debt or to start saving money or something money related. And this episode, we are talking, I actually invited a friend of mine, her name's Nasima, and she is a nurse turned financial expert to really dive into this whole topic of money, investment, financial planning, because it's something that is so important and really isn't talked about that much. We in spa, we talk a lot about revenue and we want to, you know, there's this kind of magic number that everyone wants to get to that six figure spa. They win, they want to make a hundred thousand dollars in revenue. And might I remind you that if you hit a hundred thousand in revenue, that does not mean that your take home pay is 100,000. So you've got to make a lot more money than that to be able to pay yourself a hundred thousand and still have a very healthy, thriving business. But that can be a whole nother episode. What I want to talk about today specifically is investment. So what is your exit strategy in your business? People, are are you going to work until you're 65 or 70? And what are you going to do after that point if you don't have any money saved? And what if you want to retire sooner than that? What if you need more freedom? Um, you know, these are all really important questions to ask yourself. So investing, as we talk about in the interview, which I'll play here in a minute, it's something that kind of has this scary stigma to it. It seems really complicated. It seems really heavy. It seems out of reach. It seems like it's just one of those things that you'll do when, and it's something that the earlier you do it, the better. And you do not have to have a lot of money to be able to provide for yourself in the future. Now, we talk about the power of compounding interest. And before we get into this episode, I did some numbers and I've got my notes over here. So I'm going to be just kind of peeking at these notes. But I wanted to just show you guys the power of compounding interest. So, how many of you guys love Starbucks or you get an afternoon coffee? You know, this is, you've heard of like the latte factor. We don't realize how much money we spend on these little things and how much money that could be down the road. So when I was working um, at a med spa, I used to, it was just like my afternoon routine that I would go and get an afternoon coffee at least two or three times a week. That was just part of what I did. I did coffee at home in the morning, but around two or three o'clock, it was always like, that was my saving grace. I loved my afternoon coffee. And I read this book. I'll have to look up the author for you guys, but he was basically explaining the latte factor that we don't really put a lot of thought into spending five bucks or something like that. It's a small amount of money. It doesn't feel like we're doing anything that's really going to contribute negatively to our financial health. But when you add that up, and then when you look at what that could have been, if you would have invested it, it hurts a little bit more. So I'm not saying don't get your afternoon coffee or whatever it is that gives you pleasure. I'm saying just be aware that you're making conscious choices. So just stick with me here for a minute as I go through these numbers. So if you were, if you are someone who gets an afternoon coffee three times a week or spends $5 on something three times a week, that's 15 bucks a week, right? That's easy math. But if you are 30 years old and you invest $15 per week into an index fund, some type of IRA, some type of investment, $15 per week, that is going to be, that's going to come out to $780 per year. Now, if you did that just $15 per week, 
And you did that until you were 65. If you were going to retire at 65, you would at the end of that time. And and I'm projecting this as an 8% earn over the lifetime of, um, of your investment, which is pretty average. You would have $146,000, $600, here, let me repeat that again. Sorry, it's a lot of numbers. $146,638,021. Now, that is a lot of money, you guys. And especially as you know, we age and we, we cannot rely on social security. And this is even if you're starting at 30 years old. Now, if you want to really see the magic, if you were to invest $100 per week and you did that until same, everything is the same, you would have $969,209 in your retirement account. You guys, $100 per week for 35 years will make you a millionaire. So think about that. Think about that when you're making your choices. How much do you get in tips per week, per month, per day? What if you made a choice just to invest your tips. So everything you made in tips went into your investment. How would that set you up? What kind of freedom would you get? And what kind of FU money would you have? And you guys will know what that means as you listen to the interview. And Nasima introduces us to a new term, which I love. But imagine what you could do in your business, in your life, if you had that freedom to make choices, not out of fear. So give this episode a listen. We've got compounding interest calculators below the episode. Um, We've got some, uh, some additional resources for you to check out there, but I just want to kind of plug that in your ear. A hundred bucks a week for 35 years could make you a millionaire if you were to invest that. So think about that, you guys. Okay. So Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and play that interview with Nasima. All right, Nasima, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm thrilled to have you here. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Super honored. So you guys, I invited Nasima on the show. I actually met her at a business retreat and I found out that once she was a nurse, which is very closely related to our industry, we've got a lot of estheticians who are also nurses, but when I heard her story and what she was super passionate about, I thought, okay, this woman's got to be on the podcast. So Nasima is a, I guess I could say self-taught financial expert, you know, like Nasima, her story is that she got herself out of nearly $1 million in debt by teaching herself about personal finance. And now that really shifted her passion, her focus from nursing, even though I know you will always, once a nurse, always a nurse, right? You're always a caretaker. (laughs) Um, But you really want to help people protect their financial lives, right? That's your, yeah. So in spa with estheticians, we have so many solo estheticians, so many small business owners, and the constant focus is I've got to make more money. I've got to you know, pay myself. I've got to do all these things, but you never hear about people saving for retirement mm-hmm. and having an exit strategy of like what happens when they stop working. So I wanted to bring you on to kind of talk to the audience and talk to the listeners about, first of all, why that's important and how they can start making their money work for them. So it's super important to have a plan or exit strategy um, for your finances because you don't want to necessarily have to do things. You want to be able to do things because you get to do them. Oh, I so, love that. Um, 
financial independence is one of my passions. And this is something that I didn't even realize was important, even when I was going through my journey, um, just, but in learning more in depth about personal finance and understanding that, you know what, I could be living my best life today. I don't have to wait until 50, 60, 70 to retire. I can start making my money work for me so that I can focus on what's serving me. And that is my family. And that is teaching other people about personal finance. Because like you said, I'm a nurse by trade. I'm a labor and delivery nurse. I wasn't taught about finances growing up. And um, I, I stumbled upon being, upon nursing and I just happened to earn a really, really high salary. But I didn't have any net worth. My net worth was a negative. And so um, I, I really had to start from the bottom up and understanding what it would take to turn my finances around. And now I'm in a position where I only work six days a month. And my primary focus is spending time with my family. I have a four-year-old daughter. I have another daughter on the way. And in teaching other people about personal finance so they can understand the freedom that comes along with it. So one thing that I, I think is really important, and I'd love for you to touch on this, is, is you know, you don't have to make a lot of money to invest. No. And there's, I mean, it's, you know, I remember when I first started learning about IRAs and you know, Roths and traditional IRAs and all of that kind of stuff. I was, I think, 26 or 27 when I first opened mine. And I felt like I was late to the game, you know, because <laughs> I never felt like I had enough money. But I, I started, I was like, I don't have enough money to invest in a Roth. But it's really, this is a long game. This is about mm-hmm. like, like, I, what did it for me was seeing those compounding interest calculators. Oh yeah. So <laughs> that put a smile on your face. <laughs> um, so I, how do you, how do you teach people to find the space to invest if they're struggling just to make ends meet? You know? I think that they need to understand the importance of investment. A lot of times people put investing off because they think it's super complicated or they have to get an investment advisor and that's going to be really expensive. But really understanding that investing doesn't have to be hard. Um, I teach my students like an approach, uh, like a set it and forget it kind of approach where we basically track the buy um, stocks that track the market. So um, you don't need a lot of money. And there's platforms that you can invest for free, invest very little. Um, So the key is to get started early and invest often. So make it automatic. Um, Mm -hmm. That's one of my biggest regrets that I had is that I didn't understand the power of investing. And when I did, I, I thought that I had to get like a PhD level degree or level of understanding before I could invest. And it's, it's really not that hard. So I always recommend people read, um, the simple path to wealth by JL Collins, because it's a it's a book written for his daughter and she's totally not into personal finance, but he's a finance geek. And he's like, I need to make this simple to understand so that I can guarantee that my daughter can implement this and have the finances in place for her to be able to make her money work hard for her so she doesn't have to work that long. And and it's um, a concept called FU money, generating money so that you can say F you to whatever is not serving you or your family at any time. (laughs) So it's, it doesn't have to be hard. Um, just get the basics, get started. And yeah, the earlier, the the sooner, the better. And at 26, Daniel, Daniel like, that's like incredible. Like <laughs> I wish I would have started at 26. Like I started probably in my early thirties, but I was just, Oh my God, the power of compounding interest is like what the eighth wonder of the world. That's what they call it. Cause it's so incredible. <laughs> well, it kind of leads into a bigger conversation, which we see about you know, you always want your kids to do better than you. Mm -hmm. And, and 
when we talk about investing, it's more about like building wealth. And, and I like that, that a few money, like (laughs) if it's not, if it's not serving you and, and being in a place that you can, you know, choose, you get to work. If you want to work, if it's something that's great for you, it's not like you're having to work to make sure you're putting food on the table. So something as little, even as five or 10 bucks a month, if that's all you can swing that, and you'd be impressed that if you take that out and especially, actually, can you talk a little bit about SEP IRAs for business owners? Because if- um, yeah, I'm not an expert on SEP, but SEPs are excellent options for business owners because you can defer a substantial amount of your income into that. And at the same time, have it growing in um, a pre-tax account where, um, so not only is, and I know this is a big deal for a lot of people or just entrepreneurs in general is taxes. So it gives you a tax deferral vehicle where you can invest your money pre-tax and you can do up to, I think like 20% of your income or something like that. Yeah, I think it's 20% of 20 or 25% of your income or something like that. But basically for small business owners, like if you just say you made $100,000 in revenue, you could technically invest $20,000 and don't quote either of us on these percentages, but this Look is, concept. <laughs> um, yeah. you could invest $20,000 into your SEP account. And essentially you would only be taxed on $80,000 for yeah. the year. Yeah but you're getting that money that is going to grow and grow and grow for you exactly. over time. And again, you guys, even if it's just five or 10 bucks a month, the earlier you start, like play with, we're going to link up uh, the book that Nasima recommended. We're going to link up um, also some compounding interest calculators that you guys mm-hmm. can play with and just look at the timing is everything. Even if you have a thousand dollars to invest and then you never invest again. If you do that sooner and let it sit, yes. it's like, that is really. such a powerful thing to do yes. in your business. Yes. So what helped you the most? I want to talk about your story a little bit. Cause I think it's really like, it's, it's like a headline, like <laughs> nurse gets out of almost a million dollars in debt. And, and so what was it that really helped you figure out how do you invest and how, was it just reading books or did you have friends around you that were good with money or what helped you? So it was a combination of things. It was my like sick and tired. I was just sick and tired of not feeling like I had enough. Always made a good income, but I was always broke. And it was that desire to get out of broke and do better for my daughter that got me started. But what I did was listen to podcasts. So I'm a podcast junkie because I, especially because I had a long commute to work. So I started listening to finance podcasts, which in finance podcasts, they always tell you that you're the average of the five people you hang around with or that are surrounding you. Yeah, and that doesn't have to be like your personal friends. That can be like your social media network. And so I started just following people who were on the journey to debt freedom or financial independence. And in that community, I learned so much. So through podcasts, um, Facebook groups, uh, Instagram, just people who I followed on Instagram, I had daily um, reminders that people were out here like really accomplishing major things. And that's what motivated me. Um, So I did read finance books, but most importantly, I listened to podcasts every day. So I was kind of like doing mind training, you know, like um, it was totally mindset shift because now I was exposed to this world. I didn't even know existed. And it's just like, now I know it's possible. And when you know it's possible, the sky's the limit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I bet you're sure as heck going to be teaching your little ones about personal finance. Oh yeah. She probably knows more than most people. <laughs> so she's only four. I mean, you know, she has her little account, her, um, 
give safe spin account and she's pretty good like she understands okay like the other day um like her chore is to clean the toilets and to take out the trashes in the bathroom so she gets four dollars because she's four years old two of those dollars she has to invest in the bank and I match that 100%. So she has 100% match from mommy. <laughs> and then she gets a dollar to spend and a dollar to give to someone. We're still working on the giving. So I'm just letting that accumulate because she doesn't really understand how that works. But she definitely understands that spend part. But she was like, mommy, I am so excited. I have $3 to spend at the arcade, you know? <laughs> So she understands that she has to work for the money that she gets. And so she, I'm starting her off early. That's great. That's yeah. great. It's so important for, because I think we learn so much from our parents mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to personal finance. And, but and- more is caught than taught. Like you can preach as much as you want to, to your kids, but they need to see you actually doing it. Like my daughter hasn't watched me dig my way out of debt. My daughter has seen how I used to work six days a week. And now I'm home with her most of the month. I don't only work six days a month. Like those are things that matter. So you need to be showing them through your actions because that's what they're going to learn from. Absolutely. Absolutely. So before we go, any last bits of advice that you would give to someone right now who is struggling financially, but is really driven to make a better life for themselves and for their families? I think that people need to know that it's possible. Number one, it's attainable at any income level. It's attainable. Um, I think that it's all about actions and it's not about the big things. Like, of course you're intrigued by the headline nurse pays off a million dollars in debt in two and a half years. Yeah. That's not what, you know, the work behind it is, is that every day I did like 1%. So every day just do 1% to change your finances, but keep on doing it. It'll, it'll seem like it'll take forever. It'll seem like it's hard that you'll never meet your goal, but you'll look back a year from now and you'll see how far you've come and you know that it's possible. So just keep on doing it. It's the aggregation of marginal gains. Those little things that you can do every day that are going to set you on a path to financial freedom. Awesome. So you guys, I'm going to link up um, Nasima's website and social media links. So if you want to stay in touch with her and have her be one of your five people (laughs) that you are surrounded by. Uh, If you're needing help with personal finance, help with just motivation in making those right choices. I know we have so much to do as business owners. We have so many decisions to make and we really just want to be with our patients and with our clients and make them look and feel their best. But when you make these little choices, these little you know, do I want to spend 10 bucks at Starbucks or do I want to invest that into my future? Everything becomes a choice. You know, all our entire lifestyle is a choice. And this is one of the most important choices that you can make because we never get back our time. And what a beautiful thing that you have now, Nisuna, to be able to spend so much of your time with your daughter and still be able to work and live the life that you want because you made those hard choices because i'm sure it was not easy to go through (laughs) by any stretch of the imagination it was not easy but it's possible (laughs) it's totally possible awesome so thank you guys for listening thank you for showing up i'll include all the links in the show notes below and i'll catch you on the next episode 